Hey there gardeners, welcome back to the jungle with Kara, your pessimistic gardener. I did finally get a request from somebody, so thank you for that, to talk more about compost buddies. So little arthropods and invertebrates that you might find in your compost and a little bit about them. So I'm going to do that right now. Since my compost just got filled back up and is resting now, it's not going to have too many buddies yet. So I'm going to go through the garden beds that I put compost in recently and see what we can find. So let's see what we can dig up here. All right. So right off the bat, we've got a bunch of these guys and these are millipedes. Specifically, these ones are called scarlet millipedes. At least that's their name in the pet trade. Um, they're not native to Florida. These guys are not supposed to be here. They are an exotic species that has found its way to Florida, probably through the pet trade or maybe through the plant trade in pots. And now they're very happy here, especially in our yard. They've really taken off. And they are detritivores. So they're eating detritus. They're eating decaying plant matter or anything like that that they can find. So they really like mulch and we use a lot of mulch in our yard. So we have a lot of these millipedes here and they just get into our compost because it's full of wood products and also decaying plant products, which they love. So they're really common in our garden. Here's another one. This is another millipede, but a different species. This one here is called the bumblebee millipede. Bumblebee, sorry. You can see it's like blue and yellow. That's why it's the bumblebee millipede. Again, it's an exotic species. It's not supposed to be here, but it has adapted very well to our conditions and is extremely common in our garden. In our compost, we will get these by the thousands. So they reproduce quite readily. They're not necessarily um, bad. Uh, again, this is a... Uh, Wow, this is a tough topic because I would call them invasive because they're not supposed to be here. But then some people on the internet are going to come at me and say, you can't call it invasive because no one has done a study to show that it has a negative impact on the ecosystem, Kara. So you can't use the term invasive. Well, Gary, I'm going to use the term invasive anyway because nobody is studying the impact of invasive creatures on our native arthropods. No one is studying what impact millipedes and chameleons and um, all the different lizard species that are invasive are having on our arthropods. No one's looking at that. No one's looking at what they might be doing to our native soil dwellers, to our native insects. So I'm going to call them invasive and forget you, Gary, or whoever's going to come at me about the term invasive. So they could be bad, and we just don't know it yet. They could very well be forcing out our native millipedes, our native other detritivores, our native roaches, to take over as the dominant detritivore in our ecosystem down here. We just don't know because nobody's studying it. Nobody's looking at that. But in terms of my compost, which isn't a natural part of the ecosystem, we brought it in as humans, and we are also not supposed to be here, especially me because I'm a white European, and I should just go back to Europe where I came from. Um, but anyway, our, our compost isn't really native, so I can't be mad about these guys being in my compost and my raised garden beds. If I find them out in the native areas of our garden, then it could be a problem. So, uh, that's millipedes, your two species of exotic millipedes here, scarlet and bumblebee. And we do have native Florida species of millipedes, but I have yet to find one in my garden. Maybe because these guys are here instead. I just found another pocket here just full of more millipedes. It's just nothing but millipedes here and also, but they made this soil, you guys. This was made by these millipedes mainly. This is mostly millipede poop making this beautiful soil here. So I can't be too mad at them, you know, because they're making good soil for my veggie beds. All right, this is concerning. I'm really trying to find the other organisms you might find in compost to show you guys. But the more I dig, the more I just find these exotic millipedes. So it's looking more and more like maybe they are having a negative impact on our native other arthropod species because all I'm finding right now is them and not the other organisms that I was hoping to find. So I'll keep digging. Okay, it's still just millipedes, you guys. I keep digging. And I'm just finding a bunch of millipedes. Um, where's all my other garden buddies? 
just exotic, what I'm going to start calling invasive millipedes. And all the Garys of the world can come at me and tell me I'm using the wrong term. And we'll have a fight about it. Um, okay, you probably can't see it. There is a little isopod here. That tiny little white thing moving around. You see that? That's an isopod. Um, also called roly polies or what else do people call those? There's all kinds of... Oh, there goes an ant crawling by. You might find ants too. But the isopod or roly poly or pill bug, that's what some people call them. Um, they are also detritivores. So they're out here helping to break soil down and... They'll eat little fungal spores and detritus and things like that. So they're good to have. You always want isopods. And they can get much larger than that, but I'm only seeing really, really tiny ones. And there's many different species of isopods, guys. There's so many different species of isopods, and they're always good to find. And the ant we saw wandering by, there goes another one. I believe that's a species of crazy ant. Ants are also fine to have in the compost. They're not a problem. They can be there. They're turning over that soil, guys. Ants will move that soil around. They're going to aerate it. They're not great in your garden beds. Not great to have in your garden bed because they will aerate it too much for the plants. They'll like put too much air at the roots of the plants and then your plants are going to start dying when ants build their little mounds inside your garden beds. But in the compost, they're fine because you want air in your compost. So those ants are going to help to aerate your compost. There's some more tiny little isopods down in there. There's a little guy. We like our isopods. Ants are fine, and crazy ants don't sting. They're not like fire ants, so you can put your hand right into a crazy ant mound, and they're not going to hurt you. Don't worry about it. Did I just see? There we go. A little centipede, a little tiny centipede moving around. So we have millipedes, centipedes, isopods, and ants so far, but there's still a few buddies that I haven't seen yet, so we're going to keep digging. Aha! Found... Uh, something most people will expect to find. Earthworms. You will find these and everybody knows about earthworms. People have worm bins. So you know what they do already. You know how they break down organic matter and turn it into earthworm castings, which is full of nutrients. Now, did you know that a lot of the earthworms are not actually native? I don't know what species of earthworm this is. I'm an entomologist and we don't study earthworms. <laughs> We study insects, which have six legs. This has no legs. I did not study what these are, so I cannot identify this species. I have no idea if this is native to Florida, but probably not. Odds are this is another invasive species that might be having negative impacts on our local native soil organisms. But for the garden, you know, where gardeners are concerned for just trying to grow food, they're great. Right here, we've got a nice little pocket, all kinds of isopods down in there. All kinds of tiny little isopods. Great to have. Love to see it. Oh, sorry. Got a little blurry there. Hard to focus when you're also digging. Aha! About time. So, what we see here is another millipede, but also a roach! Gross, right? That's, that's why uh, I'm always fully covered in the garden from head to toe, because we have roaches everywhere and they climb readily on you when you go sticking your hands in the soil like I'm doing now. They take that as an invitation to climb up your hand and up to your sleeve and down your shirt. And this weekend I had one in my pocket somehow and I was, I was screaming and stripping in the garden because I don't like them because I'm a terrible entomologist who hates roaches. Anyway, uh, don't tell my entomologist friends, but they already know. They already know. But look at this, guys, millipedes everywhere. They're not native. This species isn't, these two species aren't supposed to be here. Um, neither is that roach, by the way. I think that was a, and my entomologist friends can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was a juvenile Suriname cockroach. We have a lot of cockroach species in Florida. Many of them are not native. I was honestly hoping to find a lot more roaches. I don't understand what's going on because usually I find them without even trying to because they're down my shirt or up my pants, or in my pocket, or climbing on my neck. Um, but w wouldn't you know it, when I'm actually looking to find them to show you guys all the roaches um, and prove I'm not crazy, I can't find any. So I sound like a crazy, paranoid roach imaginer, but I thought oh, there was one. There you go, there's another roach. Okay, now roaches, again, although these are probably Suriname cockroaches, which are not native, 
having them in your compost doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. They like to eat organic matter. They're detritivores, like the millipedes. They are in the same niche as the millipedes, so they're helping you compost, honestly, as disgusting as they are to most people. Some entomologists love them. I'm not one of those entomologists. I'm a bad one. Um, even though they're gross. Ooh, I think I just found a pocket of, ooh, there's a pocket of roaches. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so bad at being an entomologist when it comes to roaches. Yeah, there's, there's roaches there. Um, even though they're disgusting and I hate them, they are breaking down detritus, so I accept them as part of part of the garden ecosystem. They are helping to make your compost faster. Oh gosh, I just don't like them guys, I'm sorry. But there they are. It's fine if they wouldn't crawl on me all the time. Nothing else crawls on me. I don't get millipedes climbing up my pants, okay? Just roaches. Only roaches have ever climbed up my clothing. Anyway, roaches, another thing you'll find in your compost. It's not bad, doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. They're not harming anything, they're helping but they are gross and just try not to get them in your clothing like I do. There goes an earwig. We have an earwig friend here. There it goes, saw the earwig. Anyway, everybody knows about earwigs. They'll be in your compost too. They're omnivorous, so they will feed on some of the plant matter, but also they'll feed on the other organisms in your compost. They'll do a little bit of both. So they're kind of a chaotic neutral part of the compost. They'll do a little bit of everything in there. And of course, they're another one that I've had crawl on my clothes and pinch me on uh, certain body parts that I don't want to mention on YouTube. But yeah, they'll crawl up your clothes and pinch you. They won't lay eggs in your brain, usually, um, but you never know. There's a Suriname cockroach right there. Slippery little devils. They slip right under your clothing and climb where the sun doesn't shine. Get out of here. Don't climb. There's another one. Oh, I found the roach pocket. I don't like it, you guys. Okay, let's see if we can find a different pocket. Found a pocket of ants. Again, they are our aerators for our compost in our soil. And I'm not running away because these aren't fire ants. They're crazy ants. They can't sting me. They won't hurt me. They actually help to decrease fire ant populations because they'll take over fire ant mounds. Oh, and we've got a spider down there. Where you have other insects, you'll have spiders because they're predators. So you will find, look at that little guy. I believe that's one of our wolf spiders. I believe. Um, again, spiders aren't insects so we don't study them in entomology unless we want to do it out of fun but spiders are another natural part of the ecosystem that you might find and they're predaceous so they're just there to eat the other bugs sorry insects see i've got the ants crawling all over me but it's fine because they're not fire ants and i'm not worried about being stung these crazy ants are not going to hurt me how do i know they're crazy ants for somebody who's not an entomologist they have very long legs and they're very fast Anyway, but I am going to brush them off me, so give me a second. All right, I've moved over to our food waste compost bins to find some other organisms that aren't in my yard waste compost. And this here, which a lot of you may already be familiar with, are black soldier flies. So these are either the last instar or the pupae of the um, soldier flies, the black soldier flies. So there's the larval stage, then they pupate, then they become adults, and these guys are... Uh, they're still moving a bit, so I'm not sure if they're the last instar larva or if these guys have already pupated. I'm not super um, educated on black soldier flies. Again, sorry for my lacking as an entomologist, but I studied mosquitoes and thrips. Anyway, these guys are one that everybody knows about because they use them for chicken food. You can even use them for human food or other animal food. I give them to my chameleon every now and then as a good snack, good healthy snack. And they found their own way into our compost bin. We didn't bring them. I know people, you can buy them online to use them for composting, but they are just here naturally and they find their own way. We've never had to put them in our compost bin. And they're down there in a little pocket. They're a little sluggish right now because it's, it's cool out and they like it hot and it's not hot right now. So they're in there working on our food waste. I don't find them in our yard waste bin though, just the food waste bin. And they're turning that into really nutrient rich sludge so they're good to have they're a good guy for your compost don't i mean i know they're gross but they're good for you for your compost and for you if you want to eat them that's up to you i personally am vegan but you make your own choices all right i found more roaches you guys we have a lot of rotting wood logs lining our pathways in our yard and look at that roaches they love it anyway just want to stress how many roaches are in florida year-round in your garden 
and they will crawl on you. Just to warn anybody who's thinking about moving to Florida and gardening, or you live in Florida and you're thinking about starting gardening, but you hate roaches, just beware. They're there. <laughs> and they, they will find their way into your clothes at least once a week if you're anything like me. But uh, that's all the critters I could find today in the compost. It is the middle of winter, uh, maybe in the summer. I would have more critters to show you guys, but that's it for now. And just want to let you know who you're sharing your garden with if you're down here in Florida. And um, next time I see something else, I'll make another video. But thanks for watching. And if you like it, give it the good old thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye.